Um, yeah, I'll open him with um, give Dan his staff credit, give Florida credit. I always open with a game like that to give them credit for having a good plan uh, offensively and defensively. I thought they did a good job, you know, trying to make us one dimensional in terms of some of the different defenses they played, and then offensively with a lot of eye candy and motions uh, that obviously we didn't handle well. I always say if somebody beats you man to man and you got them covered and you can't get the ball out, you know, that's going to happen with the way we play defense. But when you let people score with nobody around and nobody, nobody there, uh, it's not good. And we had too many of those today where they didn't, they didn't beat us. We gave it to them uh, from our defense. And it'll be a game for me that's missed opportunities. You know, I thought that we missed a lot of opportunities. Uh, it felt like defense and offense. I mean, I felt like we dropped a couple picks that could have been big plays. Um, and then obviously offensively, I felt like we missed a lot of open shots. And um, that's the toughest thing. Um, I thought Stetson did some good things early. Um, and uh, then he took a hit. He had a separated shoulder. He wanted to keep playing. He came in, got a shot. Uh, he was able to come back. But I didn't think he was real effective when he came back. He, he, he was timid with it. Didn't think he had great accuracy. So we decided to go with DeWan. And I thought DeWan did some good things. Uh, he, he, he made some mistakes, but he did some good things. And he, he still gained the experience. But overall, I give Florida credit. And I uh, think they did a good job and, and physically beat us today. Coach, I feel like I have so much to ask you. I'll just uh, keep it brief. Uh, it, it just just seemed like a lot, a lot of guys were dropping. You were already beat up coming into this game, and then kind of sort of a worst case scenario from just guys dropping. It seemed like, especially in the back end. How much did your short handedness in the secondary contribute to this? And you mentioned there was guys running free on those wheels or whatever those things are the back side of the backfield that, that looked like you never did get covered. But of course, you had a lot of guys that weren't normally back there. Yeah, but I'm not going to make that excuse because the guys that were had those backs, and a lot of them were, were guys that have played. You know, we had a couple of times where Monty and Kobe had them and uh, didn't do a good job. One of them, I thought, we got picked on. I thought they did a good job kind of picking us and rubbing us, which we run the same route, and they did a good job getting the back out on it. Um, uh, one of them, we had bad eyes. You know, they, they're in the same play twice. And Tyreek Stevenson, who's got probably the best ball skills on our team, getting ready to jump up, and I know he's going to pick it off. I've seen him do it. And he trips and falls over 84, you know, pits, and, and he catches it for a big play. And then they come back the next year and hit the same play for a touchdown on Mark Webb where he doesn't, uh, he doesn't see his guy. You know, it's tough when you give those up because we, we, don't, we don't have a simpler call than what we were in on that play. He just – he didn't see him. He didn't look at the right thing. That's very unfortunate. Uh, but not, not as many of those were because, you know, Chris Smith was in there or uh, – uh, it, it hurt us when Lewis went out because Lewis is a really good player and he's a good eraser. But – you know, the guys that come in got to be able to step up and play. And just made too many silly mistakes on defense. You can't give people those kind of points. Kirby, you guys have given up 40-plus points to Alabama and Florida. Um, you know, did, I guess you, you thought that Florida obviously uh, had the chance to do this kind of thing. I mean, what, what, uh, what had to go right for you guys that, that didn't uh, in this game defensively? I, I don't understand the question. How did it go right? You know, I'm saying, what were you guys hoping, you know, was it just a matter of guys busting open too often in, in coverage, or, or what were some of the breakdowns that really led to them kind of pulling away? Well, it's pretty simple. I, like I said in the opening, we had calls, we called, we covered them, and they beat us, right? Like Tyson Campbell, he covered 84. He's in really good position. He's a back shoulder fade player. That's where the ball goes. Tyson played for the back shoulder throw, and the quarterback threw it over the top, and he didn't get it out. So like I can live with those because we called a pressure and we tried to we tried to pressure the quarterback and he made a good throw and catch. You know what I mean? I mean I, I can live with that. What I can't live with is leaving a guy wide open on a wheel route. And 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 when you got him, you should be looking at him. That's your job, look at him. And then somehow you don't look at him and he's wide open. So those were the breakdowns that we had. Uh, there were several plays where you know we, we worked really hard on Darius Tony over the middle. He does a elite job of double moving and, and, and faking in, faking out, and moving really quick where we have to put a linebacker or a DB on him by the way they, they match him up. And sometimes we covered him, and then sometimes we didn't. And when we didn't, it was huge. You know, we had a, I think we had a chance to stop him and get the ball back, and Mark Webb had it, had uh, Darius Tony again, and he beat him. On a, I don't know if it was a third to ten. It was a big play that converted for them, and it just seemed like that happened so many times. I give Florida credit for that. Those weren't busts. Those were just, hey, we got beat, 
And uh, we got to do a better job of helping our players get in a position where they don't get beat defensively. Uh, we can't give up explosives like that. That's that's the bottom. We'll next go to Anthony Dasher, followed by Seth Emerson. Hey, Coach. Uh, you mentioned you know, Stetson's uh, injury, but you know, during the, the the course of the game, course of the game, you're, when you're contemplating making a quarterback change, uh, were there anything other than injury, or maybe you're kind of looking at it with Stetson and uh, to say, hey, it's time. And in regard to today's game, uh, why did you make wait? I guess as long to make the switch, and, and why J? Why why go on over JT? Why did we wait as long to make a switch? Well, we were making a switch a lot based on his injury and how he was feeling. You know what I mean? Stetson did some good things early in the game. You know, when he had his starting X receiver, Marcus Roseme in, and he had Jermaine Burton out there, we felt like he was doing some good things on third down. You know, he stepped up in the pocket. Uh, he missed a couple throws. Uh, he, he had one scramble that I thought he could have hit a guy over on our sideline. He just, he missed him. And I don't know that he, if he missed him because he missed him or if he missed him because, you know, his shoulder was injured. But at that point, we felt like DeWan was going to give us a chance uh, to do some different things and felt like we were going to find out what DeWan could do because Stetson wasn't 100%. And DeWan's our second quarterback, so that's who we were. Kirby, uh, this is the first time since your first year that you're in this position, no longer control your own destiny. Uh, something crazy would have to happen to get back to Atlanta. Is this – cause for concern or or do you look at this as injuries and, and attrition to this you know i don't make excuses i don't look at this cause for concern you guys will create concern and people will write all kinds of things and i respect that it's your job but you know in the sct east the last 20 games they're 19 and 1 to the night and you said it best i told the team this is the first time in the last i'm gonna say four seasons i think because three plus this one this is the the fourth season, that every game we have played in, every game we have played in, we have been really in control of our own destiny. I mean, honestly, right? We were in control of our own destiny every game up until after the SEC championship. And this is the first time that it's not that way. 19-2 in the East. So I'm not going to say the sky's falling, everything's coming down. Hey, we got to get better. We got to get our players to play better. And we've got to be explosive. You know what I mean? Like, I, I really feel like we can throw the ball. It doesn't look like on the stats, but you saw it tonight. Anybody with an open eye could say, well, they did have some guys open. I mean, we did protect the quarterback pretty well early on and be able to throw it. We got to throw and catch it. And we didn't do that, and they did. So that was the difference in the game, not, not the skies falling. We'll next go to Jake Rowe, followed by Connor Riley. Kirby, the, the answer to this is pretty obvious, but I want to give you a chance to talk about it. I and mean, you, you look at it, the offenses that you guys have faced, the explosive offenses, and then you guys have kind of had points in those games where you struggled in a major way. You know, what do you want offensively? And, and, and do you want that type of explosive, you know, attack? And because and, there's the kind, I guess the kind of the, the narrative out there is that you want to possess the ball and, and, and maybe not be quite that explosive. Don't ever mistake it. I want to win. Okay, I want to win. So you can take the narrative about offenses and do whatever you want with them. I want to win, okay? And I want to do what gives me the best chance to win. And scoring points gives you the best chance to win. But if you don't feel great about being able to throw the ball vertically with who you have, you better figure out what you can do. You know what I mean? Like getting in 32 personnel and opening the game with a truck sweep. You know, I mean, there's things there that we have to be able to do to complicate meant who we are right now so it's not I can't I can't wish myself into a uh, 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 explosive offense we have to work ourselves into that and it's not it's not play like this. it's not like well we can't go run the place Florida runs we can run the place that Florida and Alabama run that, that's not the issue we got to be able to execute at a high level we got to be able to complete more passes more accurately we got to get guys open but when we do we got to hit them we got to hit them so it's not about I want to win that's what I want to do Jake I want to win you mentioned uh, this is the first time since 2016 you guys don't control your own destiny going forward. Given the weirdness of the season with COVID-19, do you worry about your team's motivation and where their heads might be coming out of this game? No, I don't because we got good kids on the team. They understand. Uh, nobody's going to feel sorry for us next week. I mean, we're going to play a Missouri team that was just off, you know. So, like, nobody's going to feel sorry for us. we got to get ready to go play. And uh, the kids, the, the leadership of the team, 
they'll handle that. They'll, they'll bounce back. I mean, these kids are resilient. They'll have to be. We'll next go to Dean Leggy, followed by William Newland. Kirby, it seemed like Zamir, so, I mean, obviously at the beginning of the game, got going. Um, would you like to get him more runs? Was that a situation where the score was what it was and you felt like you needed to push it a little bit further with the pass game? You know, I felt like we had some some shot plays. And to be honest with you, you know, the defense plays a certain way. Like some of the runs Amir got were a draw in second nine. They're in four down. Okay, the opening play of the game is a is a is a, is a truck sweep that we designed to play and uh, it, that we blocked it. I mean, almost perfectly. But in our normal uh, operation, they were playing five big guys. And they were basically saying, "We're going to dare you to 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 throw it." And there weren't a lot of successful runs when it was five big guys in there and uh, grinding grinding down on us. It was loose plays that were successful. And uh, it's hard when you're, when you're when you're giving up touchdowns on defense to, to not try to score offensively. So that makes it tough. But certainly, we got to find ways to get Zamir the ball. And I've always told Muck, I said, we got to be able to at least have the threat of the run if, when we're trying to score. And everybody understands that. We have to have the threat. You can't just go out there and throw it every snap because we're not that type of team right now. We don't have the wide outs. We don't have the, 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 the players to do that. And what we got to be is who we are, and we got to play better on defense to complement our offense. Hey, Coach, I want to ask about the end of the first half, that whole, uh, the whole sequence, the uncharacteristic punt from Kamara and then Florida being able to drive to the end zone. Uh, from a coaching standpoint, you know, how frustrating is a series like that? Not only because I'm sure that's a heavily practiced scenario, but also in a game like this when they can squeeze in seven extra points there at half. Yeah, it's tough. Uh, we, we're usually the team squeezing in the seven points. We've always managed the half really well. And, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a catch-22 because offensively, if you're going to throw the ball, you, get, you run the risk of giving them the ability to stop the clock. And I wanted to be aggressive on offense and try to go score because we needed to score, certainly, uh, at, the, at the point we were. And we weren't able to do that. And then, you know, I'm counting on what I think is the best punter in America to take care of me and, and hit a bomb down there. And we didn't hit a bomb and give them credit. They went down and scored pretty quick uh, with their offense. We'll next go to Roddy Nabulsi, uh, followed by Mike Griffith. Hey, Coach, the question pops up when people see Stetson Bennett and Juan Mathis kind of go back and forth. Not a whole lot of difference there. A lot of people change their attention to what's the story with JT Daniels. And I'm a little confused. Help me out here. You said that he has some ailments with his knee. Is it a situation where he has been – He's third because he's not healthy enough to play or because the other two give you a better shot? Yeah, right now we feel like the other two give us a better shot because they've gotten more of a body of work. I don't think necessarily that he uh, that he has anything with his knee. You know, he doesn't wear his knee brace anymore. He reps. He, he, he takes reps with the scouts and moves around and, uh, and gives us a really good look. And I think he's still growing and, and getting better in the offense. But uh, obviously right now where we are, we feel like those two guys give us the best shot. Uh, yeah, Kirby, you want to follow up? Uh, you mentioned a couple of injuries up. Can you update us on uh, Kendall Milton and uh, Jermaine Burton? And also, when you recruited JT, was he recruited um, to be a backup? Or was, or, I mean, what was the thought process recruiting him? Uh, the injury wise, Jermaine uh, Burton, I think it's fine. He, was, he, he played the rest of the game. Um, so I don't see anything there. Uh, Kendall, I'm not sure. It may be a slight MCL uh, sprain, but I'm not 100% sure on him. Um, as far as JT, we recruit every player the same for an opportunity to come in and, and get better and compete and play. And uh, he got an opportunity to do that in fall camp. He actually got a lot more reps than Stetson did. Uh, Stetson didn't get many reps in fall camp. Um, so he took a ton of reps during that time, and uh, so did DeWan. Uh, and that's the way we did our scrimmages all over. Next. Go to Mark Bradley, followed by Brandon Sudge. Uh, Kirby, I just want to be clear on this. Bennett played with a separated shoulder. I may, I may have said that wrong. It may have been an AC sprain. Uh, is what it's the throwing arm too. So I think Ron told me before it was an AC sprain. So I'm not 100 percent sure on that, Mark. It's either uh, that, and I'm, I may get Claude to go ask. Uh, uh, Ron, either a seven shoulder or an AC sprain, but I think he got the shot and he wanted to keep playing and felt like he could still throw the ball. And he did throw it a couple times, but he just weren't as accurate as we needed. Thank you. Um, um, 
Kirby, kind of going back to the whole thing of not enjoying your own destiny, I mean, is there some disappointment or frustration there when you look at it and you say you're a missed opportunity away or a couple of injuries away or second half away against Alabama? Is there any disappointment or frustration there? Uh, like over this whole game, game? No, I mean, what good does frustration do right now? I mean, I, I want these, these young men to grow up and be great husbands and fathers. And if we're going to live in the past and worry about missed opportunities, you can't do that. I mean, it is what it is. Florida beat us. Florida out executed us. They, 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 they did a really good job. I'm not making it about injuries. I'm not making it about anything. I'm making it about they beat us. And we got to get better. And that starts with me. Uh, I got to do a better job, and we're going to do a better job. But I'm not frustrated with the plight we're in. We, we, we made our bet. Thanks, Coach Smart. Appreciate your time. That's it.